All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about translation. And translation is the process of taking a messenger RNA and creating a polypeptide out of it. If you want to think of this uh, word translation, it's basically what we think of translation. We think of going from one language to another. And so instead of going from DNA to RNA, which is a similar language, both are nucleic acids, we're going from a nucleic acid to a protein completely different language and so this process of translation that's what the purpose of that and it's part of this again this central dogma of protein synthesis going from dna to rna rna to protein <clears throat> and so translation occurs on the ribosome ribosomes are can be found in multiple places in a eukaryotic cell in a prokaryotic cell they're found just inside the cell there's no nucleus there's not really separate areas of the cell, uh, so to speak, whereas in a eukaryotic cell, the cell is highly compartmentalized, and so you have some that are just floating around freely in the cytoplasm. You have some that are located on the rough ER. In general, if a protein is made in the cytoplasm, it's going to stay in the cell, and if a protein is made on the rough ER, like you see here, that protein is likely going to be shipped out of the cell. Um, because remember, the, the rough ER is part of that packaging system, that endomembrane system, which uh, packages and ships proteins out of the cell. <clears throat> so let's talk about translation in general. There are steps to translation. The three main steps are initiation, where everything kind of gets um, lined up appropriately. There's elongation, where the polypeptide gets longer. And there is termination, where it reaches what is called a stop codon and um, stops. And we're going to talk what is that codon in a later video, actually, in the next video. Uh, in prokaryotes, this is happening at the same time that uh, transcription is occurring. But in eukaryotes, that RNA has to actually leave the nucleus and then is being translated outside the nucleus. So... <clears throat> this leads to another thing, and we'll talk. I'll take you back to this picture real quick because perhaps something that you saw on here that I hadn't mentioned yet is this idea of reverse transcription going from an RNA to a DNA. Well, there are some viruses that actually depend on this, and they're called retroviruses. The word retro means like backwards, all right? And so if someone is wearing retro clothing, they are wearing uh, clothing from as an, another era, right? It's a past era. And so that just means backwards. These are backwards viruses, if you want to think of them that way. A retrovirus is an RNA virus, um, and it carries with it this DNA or this enzyme called reverse transcriptase. And so if you look at the word, we know what transcription is. <clears throat> this is reverse transcriptase, which means it's doing reverse transcription. It's reading the RNA and then making a DNA out of it. What's the purpose of that? So the D the first transcriptase makes this viral DNA, and that viral DNA becomes incorporated into the host DNA. The host machinery, all of those bits that are doing transcription, like the RNA polymerase and all those other things <coughs> that are involved in that, make the messenger RNA. The host ribosomes then take the messenger RNA and create proteins out of it, and those proteins, lo and behold, are the bits to make new viruses which infect the cell, uh, cause that cell to eventually lice and make new viruses which go out and repeat, repeat the process all over again. So these viruses are particularly um, bad because they are hard to nail down. They're, they're hard to nail down because RNA is so unstable and it mutates regularly and these viruses um, do just that. They're hard to combat. Um, they're a little much harder to combat than a DNA based virus for sure. And so moving on, talking about common ancestry, we're going to talk about those three steps of translation in the next video, initiation, elongation, termination. <clears throat> but this is just a reminder that all organisms use the same genetic code. And so whether we're talking about bacteria or we're talking about like giraffes or fish or lizards or whatever, they are all using DNA and they all need this process of transcription to make messenger RNA. And they all you need this process of translation to make polypeptides in order to um, 
create proteins to do basic cellular functions. And so this shows common ancestry. There's a common, there's a common ancestry or a common sort of body plan that, um, all living things operate under, and it shows a, a common linkage to all life on Earth. 